Welcome, this is going to be a quick and dirty introduction to how to use hash maps in Java. I'm not going to tell you how they work internally, I'm just going to show you what they are. So this depicts a hash map. A hash map will let you store pairs of pieces of information so that you can use one to look up the other. A classic example of this kind of thing is a phone book. In a phone book, you store names that are associated with phone numbers, and you usually want to know what is the phone number that is associated with the name. So the pairs of values in a hash map are called keys and values. You usually look up a value by giving it a key first. So in just a second, I'm going to show you how do you add pairs of keys and values. I'm going to show you how do you look up a value that's associated with a key. And I'll show you how you can iterate over all of the keys one at a time so that you could see what's in your hash map. In Java, you can create a hash map this way. Just like an array list, you can specify the data type for both the keys and the values separately. So in the example I gave, we're going to have keys that are strings and values that are strings. But you could use any data type here. Uh, I'm going to call this phone book, and then I'll actually instantiate it by saying map string string. And then I will import it. Okay, so here's how you put things into the phone book. Phone book dot, if this were an array list, we would say add. For a hash map, we say put. So I'll put Phil, and Phil's phone number will be 555 2345. Let's put a couple of others in there. Oops. Bill will have a slightly different phone number. Jill will have yet another phone number. All right, so now I've put three entries into my book. If I want to look one up again later on in a different part of the program, I can say phonebook.get, and then I give it a key. So get fill. And it will return the value that I've associated with fill. If I get Jill, it will return the value associated with Jill. If I say get lobster, it will return null, um, because lobster is not a key inside our hash map. OK, let's just run it and verify that this works. When I run it, there we see the Jill phone number. If I put lobster, let's just verify that this works. It will return null for the reason I said. OK, you might wonder what happens if you put two different entries for the same key. The answer is that the first one will get overwritten by the second one. So here I have two entries for Jill, and you see that it returns the second entry, not the first. An important thing to know about hash maps is even though I depicted it as if it's an array, there are no numerical orderings to the items in the hash map. So fill is not index 0, bill is not index 1, because there is no such concept as an index for a hash map. Um, internally, hash maps are actually implemented using arrays, um, but in a very different way. So you might be wondering, well, OK, if I've got all these things in my hash map, how do I loop over all of them? Here's a really short answer. We'll use the for each style loop in Java. So I want to loop over all of the keys, and the keys are names. So I'll declare a name variable that's a string. And then I'll say, you wish you could say phone book. You can't. Um, but phone book dot key set. Key set returns a special data type called a set. Um, but it is a set that you can iterate over using this for loop. So this is now going to loop over every single key in the hash map, and you can see I can print key, or actually let's just print the key, so name, and then I'll print arrows, and then I'll print the value by actually looking it up in the hash map, so phonebook.get key, oh, except I called the key name, okay. So if we look at this, again, I'm looping over every single key inside the key set. I'm assigning each to the name variable. I'm printing out the name, and I'm printing out the phone number that is associated with the name. And here we see the full list. I've got Bill, Jill, Phil. Um, as I said, the, the order isn't guaranteed. So even though I entered them in the order Phil, Bill, Jill, here we got Bill, Jill, Phil. The last question you might ask is, why bother using this data structure? Couldn't you just have two different 
array lists that you update in parallel, for example. You have one array list of names and you have one array list of phone numbers. Yes, you could do that, um, but one reason to do this is for the efficiency. Hash maps have both a put and a get operation that happen in constant time, whereas if you had the parallel array list implementation and you wanted to look up the phone number associated with Jill, you would have to loop over all of the elements in the name array list until you find Jill and then get the corresponding element from your phone number list and that would be big O of N. So it's more efficient. It's also a little bit easier to maintain. You don't have to maintain these ugly parallel lists.